that we can recognize and share what you want us to share. Mm. Amen. So, um, we've been studying the Ten Commandments with you guys. So, this, um, as, this week as Brooke read our scripture, it is, um, there shall sure not kill, there shall sure not murder. So, our um, title of our sermon is, Love Others As God Does. We were studying this, and it is that love. Because if we love our neighbors or enemy, we won't kill them. So let's turn to First John three fifteen. Anyone who hates a brother or a sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer is has eternal life breathing with him. So um it says there murder isn't only about killing people. God doesn't want us to hate people either. Because we can um murder in our hearts, not just going out physically killing people. It's in our minds and our hearts. We can also do it. I got a couple of stories here to talk about. Um, let's turn to Matthew. First Matthew. Great example. So think of Joseph in this story. 
because he doesn't have, at the beginning, he doesn't have, later he does, he doesn't have an angel at the very beginning when he finds out Mary's pregnant. He has the option, as we well know, to quietly divorce her. He also has the option to call her out on the carpet, if you will, and say, this lady has committed adultery, off with her head, basically. Actually, they probably would have stoned her. But either way, that, you know, she could have been killed. Joseph had to make the decision to either let hatred simmer in his heart over this, or whether he was going to, if you will, forgive. Now, granted, there was nothing to forgive, but the decision was still there originally, because the angel eventually does come to him and says, Joseph, this child is the Messiah, and Mary is telling you the truth. He still has a decision right there. He could have said, I don't believe you, God. This is the most bogus thing I have ever heard in my life. And he could have carried on and been bitter and resentful toward Mary. But he didn't. He decided to choose love, to follow the path that God had presented for them. And so we have this beautiful Christmas story that actually starts with decisions on both parties' parts to say, I choose love. I choose to believe what God has said. And in Joseph's story, I choose to be a part of this. I don't understand this. I'm not the one that is actually carrying the child, but I choose to be along with this woman on this journey for us to have the Messiah together. And that makes the beautiful Christmas story that we're talking about where they go to Bethlehem and Jesus is eventually born. But it all starts with these two individuals deciding to choose love. So, the question comes down to, so, if we're looking at the good examples, how do we choose to love others, or love others and don't hate? Um, a favorite uh, saying among younger people is, don't be a hater. I don't know if anybody else has heard that, but the idea is, you know, don't, don't go around, sometimes they'll say, don't judge me, but basically, you know, don't, don't be negative, they'll say, don't be a hater, is the phrase that they, they use. So that's the negative part of that. But there's so many negative things in our world today that it's hard to kind of decipher between like, well, uh, how, how, do I, how do I decide when I'm hating, hating something, when I'm loving something? Because sometimes, honestly, those two things can go hand in hand. Yes, might love something one moment, hate it the next moment, especially in our consumer, in our consumer world. So we want to look at, well, how, how on earth do we, do we do this? So here's a couple of verses about what God wants from us, how do we love, or in this case, how do we forgive? Because there is life in forgiveness. Really the opposite of killing somebody is life, and God is life. And so Matthew 10, 28 says, along the lines of, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. All right, that is pretty plain. When Stephanie and I read this together, um, a while back, I was looking at that like, wow, if you just weren't sure what Satan's role or purpose on earth is, I don't know about you, but I don't like any of those words. Kill, steal, and destroy. Those are not things where you're like, oh, that's going to be my best friend, but my best friend kills, steals, and destroys. That's terrible. You're never going to invite anybody over your house that you know does that, right? It's not going to happen. This also points to the fact that he is the first murderer. He is the one that left heaven, took all the angels with him, and gave the idea to Cain to murder Abel. We all know that story. You might say, well, no, if you look in the Bible, Cain's the first one that, that murdered anybody. No, Satan is the first murderer. He is the one that planted the idea, and as we're looking, God is life. Satan is the opposite of life. He is the first murderer when you look at that. So if you're not sure about his role on earth, there it is. If you're ever tempted, his, his role is never to give you life, to help you out with things, or help build up things. Like the Bible clearly says, that's not his job, that's not his purpose. God is life. And so when we love God, we love life and we value that. And that's a very important part in this topic as we're talking about you shall not kill. When we love God, God is life. God is the life giver, the creator. We have read these things he, in the Bible, and he is the first one to make life. This is talking about he is life. He is the life that we breathe every day. So let's talk a little bit more about forgive, which is kind of a hard subject for most people because everybody in here, guarantee you don't have to raise your hand, but everybody in here has probably had a mo at least a moment. Some people are better at holding grudges than others. So hopefully you're on the side that's 
I'm not very good at holding grudges so you can forgive it easily. And I've known people on both sides. I've known people who very easily forgive. And I also know people who just will not forgive and everything in between. We're probably in this room, probably in between. So I know that everybody has been affected by this subject. I also can probably guess that most people in here have at least had to go ask for forgiveness, even if it was something simple like, I'm sorry, sister, I ate your last thing of chocolate, which would probably be a big deal in our household. Um, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, she would extend forgiveness to me. So we're going to look at um, Luke 23, and I believe it's 23, verse 49. Don't look at the high from there. Basically, the, the idea in here, somewhere along those lines, at the end of Luke, is Jesus is an example when he's on the cross, and we all know his example. He is literally being murdered. He's hanging on the cross. He's going to die very soon. And instead of being angry, resentful, yelling out curses to people, he chooses the route of forgiveness. He forgives, right in that moment, the people that are murdering him. So if you're ever looking for, like, what's the right example when somebody's doing something against me, Jesus, right in the moment, before they were even done, is already ahead of him, forgiving him. I don't know if anybody here has ever had a heard story where people... Um, have had somebody come back later to them and say, oh, can you forgive me for doing whatever it is? And I've heard people say sometimes, oh, I forgave you a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I've heard those stories. I forgave you a long time ago. And forgiveness isn't even just about, this is another thing too, forgiveness, we have this idea that forgiveness is something specific. So generally, and I ask this question of my uh, clients a lot, you know, what is forgiveness? And I, I get all kinds of things back, but I almost always get back something like, well, I'm not going to forgive that person because me forgiving them means that they get to do whatever they want. Like, that's me condoning whatever they're doing. Maybe they have done something that was not good, that was absolutely terrible. And they have to say, well, I'm not going to forgive them. They don't deserve to be forgiven. And that comes out a lot. I've met and other people have heard that. Anybody else heard that in the room? Maybe you've even thought that. You don't have to raise your hand to thought of it. Is there other people who have heard that? And I want to just say, for the record, that is not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not you saying, oh, it's okay to keep kicking me in the shins. Um, that is not what forgiveness is about. Even Jesus' example on the cross was not, oh, it's okay, just keep killing me here. He was not forgiving them just because of that. He was forgiving them to set an example, but also to say, hey, when this is done and you look back on this, I've already forgiven you. I have already extended forgiveness to you. Forgiveness is really about life. It's about a choice. It's about doing something that brings us closer to God. How many people have experienced, don't raise your hand, forgiving somebody, maybe you've held on to a grudge for a while, and you finally just say, ugh, fine, in my heart I forgive this person. How much relief do you get from that? How much relief do you get from saying, oh, I forgive that person? Or being forgiven, going to that person and saying, Sorry, I ate your candy bar. I wasn't really thinking about it. And then saying, yeah, I forgive you. It's okay. You feel relief from that. Much less anything much bigger that happens. That is what forgiveness is about. Forgiveness is about you in that case. Believe it or not. I know it sounds really selfish, but forgiveness is about you being, you're the prisoner when you're not forgiving people. You're the prisoner when you're holding on to grudges. And a lot of times we don't, we don't see that. And actually it's the most loving thing that you can do. Because usually when we're holding a grudge, other person doesn't even know half the time or care that you are doing that. So you're really only injuring yourself. <coughs> half the time the other person doesn't even doesn't even isn't even aware that this is going on. Now sometimes yes they are aware and those are different situations, but you just being able to forgive others and yourself if you've done something that you feel really bad for, Jesus ahead of time has already said, I forgive you. God already has laid down the foundation when he's on the cross and he sets that example. Here he says, I forgive you. You just need to come to me. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I forgive you. You do not need to hold this. You do not need to hold this grudge. Forgiveness is a life. It is life. It is a choice and it's something that brings us closer to God. So it boils down to as we just said, love. We love others by accepting God's forgiveness. If we have gone to God and we've said, all right, God, what what normally is the first thing we say when you become a Christian? Generally, people have this moment of, hey, God, it's, it's, 
I'm giving this to you. I am a sinner, acknowledging that I'm, I'm a sinner. Will you come into my life? Basically, what you're asking is, will you forgive me? I want to be, I want to be with you. And doing so helps us love others because once we've learned to love God, love ourselves, we're able to extend and love others. We don't do so as we were talking about. We are really with Satan who likes to kill, steal, and destroy. Don't hate yourself or others by holding on to grudges. This really boils down to hate. You're holding a grudge really is, is hate. Whether it's hate towards the other person or towards yourself, holding a grudge isn't going to do, do you any good either. So what we would like to do before we completely end is we would like to bring you guys on this journey with us. And Stephanie is going to pass out some ornaments for you guys. And what I'd like you to do is think very carefully on this. We are going to practice... Showing love to somebody else. And so what I want you to do is look at your ornament. You can draw if you'd rather draw. But I want you to look at your ornament, and I would like for you to write on your ornament, draw on your ornament, whatever you want to do. There should be pens nearby. A way that you could share this season God's love to somebody else. I'm also going to ask that you are comfortable enough that somebody else is going to see this. Does that make sense? So don't write something too personal. Write something, a way that somebody, could be you, could share or show love this season for, for somebody else. So I'll give you a few moments. If you're really not into the writing thing, at least have it in your head of what it's going to be, because I'm going to ask you to share, not necessarily with us, but with each other. So write down one thing, that, one way you can show love this holiday season to others. Okay, some of you look like you're still thinking, but I want to give you an example of what I want you to do now. So some of you might be stuck. Hopefully you've got at least one. The idea here is I would like for you to share whatever you have written down with two other people. You might have to get up and move around to do this, but that's okay because it'll wake you back up. So I'm going to kind of show you how this should work. Stephanie and I are going to give an example. So Stephanie, what did you write down as a way that you can love others this week? Um, following Jesus' example. Okay. And so I put on mine, mm -hmm. one way that I think of as loving other people is, is giving them my time. Listening. Some people need a listening ear this time of year, and so I thought listening was a good example of that. So if you would please go find two other people, it's very simple, just ask them, hey, how do you think you can show love to other people this season? And go. <laughs> Anybody have a thought? They would like to share. Missy. I can put 
everyone who needs prayer on my prayer list and pray for them faithfully. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Put anybody who needs prayer on my prayer list and pray for them faithfully. That's a wonderful idea. Thank you for doing that. Anybody else? Have a good one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be kind. That's actually a lot harder than it sounds. Yes, be kind. Be kind to your fellow man. Nice. Very nice. He's come out with Jen this morning. Right? Right. 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 He's rolled the other rolls. Bake cookies and take it to the people that are working this holiday season. Uh, bake cookies and take it to those who are working this holiday season. Yes, there are definitely folks who are working through the holidays, particularly thinking of our medical staff mm -hmm. and police department people that are not, somebody has got to work those jobs 24 seconds. So, very good to show So, these are things that we've written down on our. Hmm. These are things that people have written down, just ideas. And hopefully, you've gotten some more ideas to generate. Like, what can I do? Ways to give that are not always about money but ways to show love, this is the, the season you're showing love is very important. Now Stephanie wanted to add something here at the end about, we were talking about forgiveness again while you guys were doing that. What would you like to add on that? Um, a lot of times people say it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is asked, to ask for permission. Yeah, it might be some ways easier, but it's a lot harder on you. This holiday season, we want to encourage you guys to show show some love in the different ways that um, you have listed. And these are yours to take on. You can do whatever you want. If you want to remind yourself of what what you wrote on it, they're they're yours. If you want some more, we'll put them out in the lobby. You can take them. You can give them away. You can write on them. Do whatever you like. We have several ornaments here. But I also encourage you if you are holding a grudge this Christmas season, if you have some unforgiveness in your heart or not able to forgive yourself for something, please remember that. God has already forgiven you. He wants you to forgive, and He loves you no matter what. So mm -hmm. sometimes the most loving thing you can thing you can do is to extend forgiveness, whether it's to yourself or to those around you. Stephanie, would you please go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your um, loving kindness you have shown us, and just help us to spread that forgiveness and kindness to everyone else. Thank you. Any name. Amen.